Welcome to Phantom Post Radio. I am Kestrel, and we have DJ. Hey! And we have Brandon. Howdy, howdy. And that's it. And, and we don't back. have a host. <laughs> I, I mean, we have, Kate, Kate, we have Kate, occasionally, a temporary host. <laughs> Kate occasionally says she's the host, uh, but really all she does is introduces the podcast, <laughs> and then like we all just kind of take over and... When we need hosting duties, Kane just steps in anyway, so it doesn't really mean anything. That's why she downgraded herself to engineer. <laughs> just demotes herself. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, we are here, and uh, we are the three who watch the most this season, and we are talking about the season that is basically wrapped up. Uh, Komi-san is not, because Netflix makes us wait three weeks for every episode. Hmm. Or, you know, three-week delay from the Japanese broadcast. So that show is over. Um, Cries in Stone not Ocean. Us. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, at least Stone Ocean, we're getting it at the same time as Japan. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, yeah, the year wait between cores is a bummer. But hopefully it means the animators get to, like, live. True. True. Um, but yeah, anyway, we're talking about the season that's wrapping up, and the only piece of news that I have since we recorded last week is directly relevant to the season and a show I'm sure we'll be talking about a lot. Is it the uh, it Kaguya-sama news? Sama, yeah. Okay, so, yeah. <laughs> that's all I had to. <laughs> yeah, so the show, uh, the third season ended, Ultra Romantic, and they announced that there will be more. They didn't specify format, release date, anything like that, just there will be more anime. Um, I'm sure we'll talk about what we think will be the future of Kaguya-sama. Uh, we all knew that there would be more because there's more manga. It's still running. Um, but it is a uncharacteristically climactic, conclusive finale mm-hmm. yeah. in some ways. Yeah, um, it was. Very, yeah, very much which, so. Which is great. So yeah, we'll talk about that. Uh, but exciting to have that confirmed anyway because, uh, as we'll discuss, that show is fucking great. Yeah, it's it's one of the best. I'm not afraid to say that. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, top tier rom com. It's probably the best comedy anime. Yeah, I you know I can't compare anything to Gintama in terms of comedy, but uh, okay. I think romantic comedy definitely no competition at all. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, even for romances and comedies on their own, it's way up there. Oh yeah, like it's it's not as good. Uh, as Gintama or Clannad After Story at either of the things that those do individually, but romantic comedies, uh, you don't get that many masterpieces, and this one, yeah, it's it's up there. Uh, before we get into that, I guess we should read off Kane's brief thoughts on the two or three shows he watched. Oh yeah, um, yeah. We can, uh, I mean, we can spread some of them in between our discussions if they're relevant. Sure, ones. yeah. Yeah, if we think we'll hit all of those, then we can do that. So I guess if we're talking about Kaguya-sama, we want to just go right into that. Start with our best foot forward, I guess. Hell yeah. So for those of you who are not the three of us in our private Discord chat, uh, (laughs) it ranks number one on all of our lists. And two of us have it at an A+, and DJ has it as an A. So it's uh, it's all right. I I give the last season an A+. I still think the last season was a little better than this one. But it wow. was still mm. really fucking good. So, mm. yeah, I mean, I definitely would have only given it an A until the finale, and then I'm like, oh, Jesus yeah. Christ, A. That was an A plus episode, definitely. Yeah. Whew. God. Yeah. So I guess, uh, you know, mild spoiler warning. Um, I guess I kind of already addressed the fact that. You know, this is a romantic comedy, and it's built very specifically on the traditional anime romantic comedy trope of, uh, you know, you wait forever and you never get an answer about the main couple getting together until the end of the series, usually, if ever. Um, and that's a very important component to Kaguya-sama because it's based entirely on the premise that neither of them can confess. Uh, and the end of the season changed the status quo way more than most of those shows are willing to do 
So that's why it's kind of such a big deal, and it was executed brilliantly. Um, but that's kind of why I'm like, huh, was not really expecting that to happen. Even though like half the season hyped it up to happen, I thought I didn't think they'd actually commit. Yeah, me neither. Um, <laughs> I'm yeah, glad they did though. <laughs> I'm so glad it was so good. And, <laughs> if there, yeah. if if, if, he, if she got up to the roof and there was a fucking another misunderstanding up there, uh, exactly. I was I'm like, done. are we gonna have a are we gonna have a Nozaki kun moment? It's like <laughs> I didn't hear you over the fireworks. What was that? And oh, no. <laughs> never to be seen like, again. How are they gonna pull the rug underneath <laughs> us? Just like always. But no, it's uh, it's like manages to balance being everything that you want as a fan and also just building up that tension that makes that genre and those tropes work so well over the course of you know the entire season the entire three seasons but especially that last hour and then the catharsis is just mind-blowing so yeah yeah. i feel like not only was it like like we said, you rarely see a full committal in a rom-com because it's like, oh, well, after the confession, it's like, w- what? They they get married happily ever after, and then we end the, <laughs> end the anime or manga. But not only did they commit, but they they really surprised me in that they took it in a direction where it's like, wow, they can actually keep this going and like completely exactly. change it. And like, I don't know, it's... It was like so refreshing. And I was like, oh my goodness, this isn't the end? Because I had no idea where in the manga it was exactly mm-hmm. and I, I knew there was more manga left but yeah I, I don't know i'm like so excited now to see yeah. where they go from here it's weird yeah, too because like even though there was a resolution uh it still feels like there there is a lot more to go mm-hmm. um and I, I i think the only other romantic comedy i felt that with was like hori Mia, which is like they get together mm-hmm. fucking in the beginning of the manga and then it's like <laughs> oh okay like i can see how this continues and i think this is another one of those situations where it's like okay well yeah they got together but like it's still kind of not close to the end well i guess it could be close to the end i have not followed the manga at all um Mm -hmm. but it's still publishing so probably not right yeah i think i looked up like where the chapter count was and i think we still got a lot still you know hell yeah good i want still out there and i mean there's it's still running (laughs) yeah yeah. please just keep going yeah i've um preemptively titled season four uh kaguya-sama after story um but it's <laughs> oh no <laughs> if it gets fucking Wait. depressing i swear well i mean if I we go mean, they can go far it's enough into the before. ishigami route it's true yeah 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 i mean it does have a lot of really sincere emotion in it um but i just mean in terms of like a romance that's actually willing to acknowledge that life exists after the boy and girl say they like each other Mm -hmm. which that's that's almost unheard of in anime (laughs) right which like my so i've been reviewing the show since season one um and most of my uh season finale review for this season was just kind of like dissecting why we as romantic comedy anime fans are so broken and (laughs) why we are masochists that love to just be put through this endless torture um and i think this series has managed to give us what is best about that which is just that tension and making the the catharsis feel so much more powerful like it's it's (laughs) such like everything that like if you describe what happens in this season finale uh compared to what happens in like virtually any other anime i'm watching it's like that's the most boring thing in the world like even if that happened in real life that's boring as hell but it's because we've been sitting through this for you know dozens of episodes and it's been built up as like the most important the biggest event the holy grail uh that it means so much to the characters and means so much to us because of how much it manages to get us invested in them that's exactly and, why I watch like every romantic comedy series that right. comes out. It's because I'm endlessly chasing after that catharsis and I just never <laughs> get it. <laughs> and when I do, though, it, it makes it all worth it. Like I'll trudge through another fucking 20 horrible rom-coms just for one good one. I'm just, I, just see, I, I want all of them to end up that way. I just see DJ sitting on the Makoto Shinkai train, just <laughs> longingly looking out at a romantic comedy in the distance. That's really the perfect analogy for my life at this point. <laughs> I think, too, the 
like the while the payoff was like amazing and everything we wanted and more it's not like it blew its whole load either because mm-hmm. there's all these side characters and romances going on on the side that they were very well balancing all the way till the finale and now it's like oh well yeah we got like the big payoff we wanted but also there's all this other stuff like what's gonna happen with ishigami and hayasaka and there's still so much other stuff to like look forward to it's so awesome and even beyond that even with the main couple like the the genius thing about it is that they managed to you know subvert the trope and actually give us an answer and then find a technicality within themselves to say well technically (laughs) we didn't actually like confess or say we're dating or anything so now we still have that kind of dynamic to work through even though obviously they're together Um, genius and (laughs) the other characters don't know yet uh so yeah there's still so much more to develop with that and you know the whole going to america um actually living a life together potentially away from you know anyone else that they know uh being separate from the rest of the cast and then yeah that entire rest of the cast has been developed so much over the seasons that we care about them almost as much in some ways certainly not in these past couple episodes uh but yeah i care a lot about ishigami and his romance i care a lot about chika and hayasaka so and miko um yeah, it's like and Miko. <laughs> somehow by uh, closing out the one thing that it kind of predicated its entire premise on and used as its backbone, by closing that out, it somehow managed to introduce like infinitely more possibilities than we've ever yeah. had in the series before, which has also managed to be less repetitive than most of you know that kind of genre. Um, because it always introduces, you know, last season had a lot of more emotional material and actual developments of, um, you know, new characters coming in. But this changes way more. And yeah, I'm so excited for what's to come. Yeah, I think uh, this is one of the rare shows where I like literally every character, like a lot. Mm-hmm. Like there's mm-hmm. nobody who I'm just like, ah, I wish you'd stop talking and just go to the go back to the kaguya part no it's like i actually care about every single subplot and that was another thing that i think horimiya did really well as well um it's you get the main couple and then you get all the other stuff that sort of happens in the background that's not actually the background and it's right just it it feels so alive and entertaining mm-hmm. in every way i think the, yeah. the thing about the main premise to uh You mentioned that, like, oh, from the beginning, it's always been this love is war, whoever confesses loses. And it's like a, it's a funny premise to start off with. And, you know, with most comedy or rom-com anime, it's like, okay, you have like a shtick and you go for it for a while. But then, you know, it it usually dries up at some point. It's like, well, they either, uh, it either fizzles out or like you get the payoff and it ends. But it was just so brilliant the way they flipped it being like a, uh, confessing is losing and it's like okay but at, like at, w- at what point does that like become just like a a blockade or like a siphon to keep like drip feeding this but the way they approached it and the way when we got to know the characters better and got to learn about their insecurities it just like oh, it totally changed what the whole concept of mm-hmm. the non-confession war was yeah absolutely yeah and I think you know the what you said about all the background characters i think this show i've probably called every character the best character in the show once (laughs) during it because it's like whoever is in the scene at the moment is the best character in the show you Mm -hmm. can't imagine anyone being a better character and then five minutes later you get a completely different scene and now a new best character is there including the narrator who is often the best character i i feel like even though i And I I could be wrong and I could be misremembering, but I feel like this season had probably the least Hayasaka time, but I think it was my favorite Hayasaka season overall. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. She was just fantastic every time she's on the screen. And the fucking, the thing with her mom, that she just loves her mom so much, that was the (laughs) cutest character trait I've ever seen in anything. (laughs) Yeah. I love that she just kind of like got to the point where she's like, you know what? 
I'm done putting up with with Kaguya's bullshit. I'm gonna start like pressing her on this and just like uh her she just ripping into her the whole time was so good. Mm. And like becoming like a love interest rival just like spiced things up so much. Yeah, yeah. I've I've always loved Kaguya as, you know, maybe the funniest character with her deadpan comedy and her harshness and her different personalities that she puts on. Um, but just the amount of like genuine Hayasaka moments that we had this season, which we've gotten in the past, but it seemed like almost half of her time there was like some little hint of something underneath that she just, mm-hmm. you know, wasn't quite able to suppress it anymore, which is, you know, it makes her a lot more fleshed out and a real person instead of just a joke character. All it took was the power of rap. Yeah. <laughs> uh, speaking of the rap, just like the voice acting in the show from the mm-hmm. beginning has just been like A1, just so good. And the range. Is that because it's A1 picture? <laughs> I, I, I did do that on purpose, yes. Uh, yes, yes. But uh, the range of like voice acting is just so crazy from just like Kage is like high pitched screams to her, yeah, her deadpan, like serious mode to her, like her, like flirty voice and just, oh, it's, it's all so good. And speaking of the rap, I, I think that was the funniest part for me this season was the, the sea slug thing. And, uh, I sure got just going like, boy, 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 just destroying everyone in his vicinity. <laughs> oh. Yeah, DJ and I were talking about how amazing Aoi Koga is uh, right before you got mm, on. She's yes. ridiculous. She's got, like, the best range of yeah. anyone. <laughs> yeah. Um, Man, it, it but really the, the true funniest moment of the season is the uh, two seconds in, I think it was the first episode, where they just talk about Kaguya's arm strength, and it flashes <laughs> to the part of the season two opening where she has the bow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> the Loved funniest it. two seconds of anime I've ever seen. <laughs> I think this oh was God. easily yeah the funniest show I watched this season too and I mean I mean there wasn't really that much crazy competition but for some shows that were like very much comedy forward I don't know just everything about this show is hilarious as it is adorable Yeah I mean this show this season was uh a lot of comedies and lighthearted comedies and romantic comedies um so like you know I'm surprised that I laughed more at the show than Spy Family. Um, mm. I'm not that surprised I laughed more at it than Komi-san. Um, but I think it could have had some competition. But yeah, it managed to be like laugh out loud hilarious every episode. Um, and then, you know, occasionally extremely emotional, poignant, um, sometimes just like captivating, gripping with its tension, which again was, you know, based on completely mundane things that were built up to be so important um and yeah the finale like the whole show is so well directed yep but the whole final climax sequence on the uh the clock tower that was insane sure sure gane is such a chad like (laughs) how did he oh the, the whole yeah. planning process and he's like oh but i gotta make sure like my boy's good too and i gotta make sure this right. is good for everyone i was like oh and like it it made everything that led up to that in the season f- so much better in retrospect too because it was really leading up to this it was building up and it made it so much more earned because it's like yeah you can spout out this whole you know light yagami plan that <laughs> this is how you plan it all out but they you know placed all those as breadcrumbs leading up to this point like oh yeah that's why all of these people were just magically distracted by these various things at just the right moment yeah it's great nice. and i kind of you know i described this series when it first started in season one as like you know romantic comedy death note um and that really came full circle with shiragani's big reveal of this is everything that i planned out for this moment yeah. yeah, so satisfying. The uh, you mentioned how good the directing was, and like I said, I don't have a great frame of reference from how the manga is, but mm-hmm. just the way that they they do good like cutaway gags or like transitions and stuff is just so uh, creative. It's just like so many like cool like camera pans and like uh, just like even like background gags going on, and I don't know. Like I said, if 
some of this stuff was in the manga, but just like the crazy references and things that they do that just, uh, and, and the just like deep cut references to things that happened earlier in the season or like two seasons ago. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, by the way, these characters have been here the whole time. We right. just like never officially introduced them, but here they are. Oh. Yeah, they they have a lot of like Easter eggs leading up to characters' introductions for, yeah, seasons at a time. And I think, you know, I've read the first few volumes of the manga, and it's great. Um, but yeah, this director and the whole team is definitely elevating it beyond its source material a lot. Um, which, I mean, I figured even before I read any of the manga, like, you know, a lot of this, uh, you got to take some creativity because they're really using the medium really well. Um, and, you know, that, yeah, that final episode was a great example of that, just how that was all shot and put together. Um, but yeah, all of the comedy bits throughout, just the way that the timing hits and yeah, the cuts in between scenes. Uh, the fact so that the timing hits is remarkable too, because this show is just so insanely fast mm-hmm. and it's like, it, it's so fast, but it still gives you like a two second window to understand the comedy and it's i don't know that's probably a shitty explanation but (laughs) it i think it makes sense and i just i'm so uh shocked by how well they're able to have a show at that breakneck speed still be able to deliver extremely poignant moments and it's just it's crazy yeah whoo just too much good stuff to say about this show. I don't know. There's, I literally can't think of a, a weak point in this season, especially as well. Just like the, yeah, the pacing of like the importance of the cultural festival and like even knowing that this big event is coming, they'll like drop like a, oh, you didn't know, but like this is going to be like the last cultural festival for, for these characters or like it's like this reveal and that reveal. And it's just like, oh, it like kept you on the edge of your seat the whole time. I, the whole time, I was so ready to be like, this show fucking pulled the rug under, pulled the rug from under me. It, you know, didn't give us the actual ending that it promised. It's just going to be another stupid misunderstanding. Everything's going to go back to status quo. Mm-hmm. Nothing's going to change. So, yeah. Nope. It now that all of that has been completely turned on its head, I can't think of a complaint at the moment. Like, you know... It, Ishigami's story uh, did end up not resolving because of misunderstandings, which is what I expected to happen with this, with the main couple, um, which is like, yeah, all right, that's your romantic comedy trope. Um, But like you said, it does just give us more to look forward to in that. And given what the cultural festival and the finale were really about and how it delivered on that, I'm like, all right, I don't fucking care about Ishigami right now. (laughs) What a felt too final if Ishigami also got everything that right. he wanted. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah. okay, well, we don't really need any more if everything is being resolved right now. <laughs> no, yeah. it, it wouldn't be right if he was not down bad in some way by the end. <laughs> but I'd just be completely overshadowed by the main couple too. So it's like yeah. save right. that yeah. moment for when it can actually resonate. For sure. Yeah. And I do I do think it's cool that they don't need to force a romance on every main character because like Mm -hmm. she could just like isn't romantically involved with anyone and they they even showed that in the last one of the last couple episodes she's just like not interested i got a mystery to solve peace she's in love with mystery (laughs) yeah that's that's the core romance of the show (laughs) chica and mystery yeah uh board game club are insane (laughs) can i give a quick shout out to the uh the the ending theme of the rap battle episode which we didn't touch on because that was amazing (laughs) the animation on that oh my god (laughs) that was like this season's chica dance yeah exactly that's what it was (laughs) yeah 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 god it's like the show just everything goes right in the production and everyone involved is clearly like we have resources that we would not normally get for this kind of project and we are going to make the most of it and they're all just doing such a great job so good to see all right 
Do we have anything else on Kaguya-sama, or is uh, the 20 minutes we just spent on it enough? <laughs> I suppose we can move on to something else. Yeah. If we, let's if we uh, go on let's much hit up long... one of Kane's. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Kane watched, let's see, Spy Family, Ahad and Son, and Birdie Wing. Anyone? So, any preference? So, I think we should do a big heel turn, go from the best to potentially the worst, because I am interested... <laughs> in this whole birdie wing thing as i see that <laughs> dj you also put it at the yeah. very bottom of your list and i think yeah, Kane dropped worry. it but <laughs> i just thought it was interesting because at the beginning of the season both of you seem to have pretty high hopes that it would be a fun watch so i just want to know what went wrong with that. i don't know if our hopes were ever high <laughs> after the show started airing oh. <laughs> um, i think before it came out we were like yo golf anime that sounds rad but then the first episode came out and I'm like, this is fucking bad. <laughs> and uh, it never gets better. Um, but did you, for some did you reason, I still it? watch the entire thing. So oh. you can read Kane's thoughts first and I will uh, I'll pick up after that. All right. Kane's thoughts on Birdie Wing dropped after the end of the Mafia storyline or whatever. Just couldn't bring myself to care about the characters enough, although I enjoy over-the-top sports action type stuff that can't be the only thing propping up a whole show. Plus, how can you escalate a story beyond that? At that point, the only thing she wanted to do was play the other main girl again at golf, not exactly even in terms of tension or stakes. I'll tell you how you you elevate the material beyond the Mafia storyline. You have a tournament arc, which is Ooh. what we are doing right now, and they just <laughs> announced a fucking second season of Birdie Wing, wow. which is a thing that I'm going to have to watch because <laughs> it literally just ends like... Out of like out of nowhere, like it's it's not a final episode by any means. It just like stops in the middle of the tournament without wow. any big thing happening. Um, and I think that that is a testament to just how shitty the show is, <laughs> because <laughs> there's not really anything about it that is good. Um, uh, well, besides the ending theme, which is a bop, but the opening theme is so horrible that it kind of ruins that. Uh. <laughs> All in all, I wouldn't recommend this to anybody. Um, it's just... It's so ridiculous. But it's not ridiculous in a, a good way. It might seem like it's trying to be ridiculous and over-exaggerated in a good way at first. But I, I don't think that that's what it was going for. I think that that is actually like what the show is and i think it takes itself seriously which it shouldn't because mm. it is very very bad and just <laughs> pure silly and all of the characters are completely forgettable and just they are the manifestations of like a single quirk or personality trait that you just hand a golf club to and you say go and it's just it it's cringy and not fun and I, I don't know why I kept watching it. <laughs> Sounds like it What's was like that? a bit tone deaf. Right. It's just, I don't know. I feel like they just made an entire anime out of an idea and like didn't have anything to actually do in it. So they were like, uh, what happens next? <laughs> golf. Uh, and then that's all that happens. And so they're just like, well, what if uh, the golf got slightly crazier and you had like a, a a golf mafia and it's just shit like that and so it becomes like this weird shonen battle anime but like the most boring shonen battle anime of all time where like every single golfer has like their one thing but they show it for like one hole that lasts two minutes and then that character is just gone and the main girl's superpower is just that she hits the ball really hard. Like, that that's her thing. And <laughs> everybody's like, oh my god, she hits the ball so hard that I no longer am good at golf anymore. And that's just how she wins every single hole. And it's ridiculous. Jeez. Yeah, it's amazing that it's got such a bad like season finale because normally you'd think oh well they just didn't have a good point in the manga to end the one core at but it's not based on anything it's an original so they could have planned it out perfectly <laughs> yep. to have like a really good wow. ending and still build up for a se second season or whatever 
if yeah if i didn't like look online that it was the last episode i'd have no idea because there, like, there's not even an announcement at the end of the episode like no end card or no like see you in the next part it's just over like any other episode and then crunchyroll posted a thing it's like birdie wing season two gonna happen and i'm just shocked as to why it would happen because <laughs> i don't think anybody really enjoys it like there are people watching it but I think it takes a special type of person to look at this show and think, yes, this is a quality piece of animation when uh, everything in it has been done better before. I've I've not seen any other golf anime, but I can tell you that there are better ones <laughs> because this is just <laughs> not it. It is the the one um, silver lining, though, is that we finally in the last episode of it, it like kind of got Yuri. Um, so maybe season two will be really good if that happens. <laughs> <laughs> really good or really pandering to you personally? <laughs> really pandering to me personally, which is really good in my book. <laughs> I mean, sounds like it can only go up from there if that's the case. Yeah. But. <laughs> Yeah, I I mean, if they announced the second season at the end of the first season, then I assume it was already, you know, underway and they just didn't realize that people were going to hate it or not watch it, Um, which is a bummer. But that seems like it's probably what happened because, you know, they had to already kind of have it in process if they have an announcement. Has there ever been anything that where they like announce a new season and then they like unannounce it? Yeah. No. <laughs> uh <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, Flowers of Evil um, mm. had an entire preview for the second season at the end of the final episode of season one, and it just never came out, huh. uh, which yeah. is rough because I read that manga and like it stops at a decent point. But like there's shit that happens after that that's really important to the story uh, and they just we never got it. Yikes. That was a weirdly received show, though. Like, I remember right. after the first episode of that came out, because uh, I, I don't even know if there was a trailer for it beforehand, and no one knew it was going to be, like, entirely rotoscoped. Mm -hmm. um, and the first episode came out, and I remember it having, like, a, a three-point-something on Mal. <laughs> and uh, it, it did not have good scores. But by the end of the series, they had bumped up to the sevens, I think. And mm -hmm. I, I really like that anime. And uh, I think that the weird rotoscope animation made it enjoyable in a sense because it made you uncomfortable and the entire point of the show is to make you uncomfortable. And I know that this isn't a thing that aired this season, so I shouldn't be spending a lot of time on it. Uh, but yeah, that's the only example I can think of where there was a preview for a second season that just didn't happen. Did they ever like officially announce another season or it just ended with like a preview of what's to come? I don't, I can't remember, and it was a while ago now, but I remember mm -hmm. being under the impression that, like, there was definitely going to be more because of the way the episode ended. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't know if there was a formal announcement, but in my head, uh, that was good enough to be a formal announcement. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess, you know, usually, um, you don't, like, if something's planned, to actually have more then they'll actually announce it um with that they probably just like you know put it there as a teaser for you know please buy the blu-rays which people did not um, oh yeah no so not at all no make more, uh or you know just buy a bunch of the manga uh so that we can make more because that's also a, a chief concern of anime adaptations of manga um yeah it was yeah. just weird because it wasn't like like a one scene preview it was like an entire montage of like 20 different things that happen in mm -hmm. what i assumed would be the second season and then it just cuts to black and it's like oh okay cool more and you don't get more yeah i'm sure you know the staff wanted to make yeah. more you know it's like for like a recent example uh with dune um you know it, the staff didn't have the go-ahead to make a sequel until after the first movie came out um but it was still called dune part one uh so you know some of that can just be the creative team being like all right we're gonna put in a bunch of previews get people really hyped up so that they're really motivated to uh you know support us and get us a second season greenlit um but that was not in the cards for that show <laughs> rip yeah people had a campaign in japan where they uh 
placed a bunch of pre-orders for yep. the Blu-ray box <laughs> on Amazon Japan uh, so that they would have to make a bunch of them, and then they all cancel before the release. I don't so that, get like, why they, they wasted a bunch so of money. Mean. <laughs> it's just mean spirited. That's that is actually it's it wasn't evil. even bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good show. <laughs> yeah, that's a. Uh, you know what wasn't Birdie Wing? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <that's what> <laughs> and we're back to that. <laughs> but yeah, and. In terms of shows where it's like, you know, I think like Birdie Wing Season 2, does that have a release date even? I feel like it does. I don't think so. Um, yeah. I just remember Crunchyroll being like, Birdie Wing Season 2, and then posted like a promo picture. Mm-hmm. And I think I yeah. just commented, why? <laughs> <laughs> so if it's got that confirmed, and especially if it's got a release date and promo art and everything, by the time the first season wraps up uh then yeah it was almost certainly in the works and they just didn't know that it might be poorly received at the time yeah i would hope that it was in the works because it's weird to just end in the middle of a tournament arc right it's just like we beat like a nobody and then that's it (laughs) yeah yeah weird glad i did not bother checking it out at all yeah good call (laughs) Same. All right, what do we want to talk about next? Hmm. Let's, let's see. I would like you guys to talk. I don't know. Let me let me look at Brandon's list. I don't know if he watched it or not. He did. Okay, cool. I want you guys to talk about Kong Ming uh, because I tried to watch this and then I forgot that I don't have high dive anymore, so I couldn't watch it. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I could. It's, high dive's only five dollars a month, so I was like, you know what? I could. Or I could just not watch it and save the time. And I, I regret that that's the decision that I made because <laughs> uh, it definitely, <laughs> the more I saw of it, the more it seemed like a thing that I would enjoy. And they even fucking do a cover of a D4 DJ song for an ending theme. And I don't know if it's just like mm-hmm. a one-off thing, but uh, that's a cool thing. And that's pandering to me. And the girl wears a hat and it's just, there are a lot of things that I like. And I want to know if uh, it was... It really is something that I would like. And based on your scores, it looks like it would be. But please tell. Tell me. Educate me. Well, You're saying D4 DJ is literally 4 DJ. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It, you know, it really is. Nice. Uh, to be I, fair, I, uh, I still had access to the Phantom Post High Dive account because I had just uh, reviewed Lupin Part 6. So that was the only reason I was able to watch it, but I am glad I was able to do so because uh, it was it was a fun ride. Um, I feel like I've always been uh, particular to musically inclined shows like Kids on the Slope and uh, Carol and Tuesday. Those are both Watanabe shows, but I mean, the man's a, a music man, music legend. But uh, no, it was really fun because I feel like it, it uh it highlighted a lot of stuff that I wouldn't expect to really be highlighted in in anime, just like modern club scene and like going like what going to a festival is like and uh, like the the recording process of stuff. So it was like partially I wouldn't say educational, but like it's cool getting like that deeper glimpse of the like music creator process especially in the era of like social media and stuff uh but with the twist of an ancient chinese strategist being your manager and using (laughs) using strategies he used to like take down uh great empires but to you know get more social media likes or like get people to come to your stage instead of the competing stage so i thought it was just like very entertaining for its uh individuality and uh both the op and ed are slappers so highly recommend at least listening to those yeah i'm looking this up now it it is the regular ending and it was in d4 dj and it was also a cover in that so apparently it's been all around um but i had no idea um but yeah i agree with all that uh especially yeah learning about the japanese club scene and edm scene and all that um, because yeah, I've really never seen anything about that in anime or in anything that I've seen. That's um, all D four DJ is about. <laughs> oh, okay, nice. The uh, yeah. s- specifically the like rap battle part I thought was interesting because I mean uh, that type of 
uh, rap style is very popular in Japan, but mm-hmm. to be able to see the actual format that they do in real life because they had the the MC for the rap battles was an actual MC for rap battles and they like just made him into a character for the show and I thought that was really neat. Nice. Yeah, I like that um there were a lot of episodes this season or in the show about uh rap battles, but the one with like the primary rap battle was the day before the Kaguya Sama episode all about rap oh. battles as well. Yeah, and there was a rap battle in Aharon that week or the week before as well. Mm-hmm. It was just big yep. rap week. But uh, sh- rap. shouts out to the translators because I mm-hmm. could not imagine take like not only having to like literally translate, but also like taking the wordplay into account and making it readable for an English audience. I cannot imagine how much work that took. That's yeah, I how I some... felt about the entire Hypnosis Mike anime. Because the entire yeah, thing was sense. rap battles. And it's absurd that people were tasked with translating and making that readable. Odd Taxi has a character who speaks entirely in raps as well. And, mm. yeah, the translator yeah. made sure that all of his lines rhymed. Uh, but yeah, I saw the translator for uh, Kome, uh, Jake Young, um, tweeting about how it was like the most difficult thing he's ever done in his life. Yeah, big props. Yeah. Hmm. But yeah, I agree, DJ, you would like it. And you knew the singer for Aiko already, apparently? Yeah, true? it's uh, 96 Neko, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, she um does the opening. She's a new Taite, so she does a lot of covers of Vocaloid songs and stuff. And she's been around for a long time. And I think her first mm. anime song was she did the opening to Scum's Wish. Um, oh. Yeah. Uh, and so I have known about her for a while, and I had no idea that she was the singing voice for Aiko. Or I- nice. is it Aiko or Aiko? It's Aiko. Aiko. Okay. Yeah, okay. she killed it. That's for sure. Yeah. Which I mean, you've got to have a good voice because that's kind of the whole premise: is that Kome is just so blown away by her voice and is inspired to make her his new master. That was another fun fact I found out was when Kome participates in one of the rap battles, uh, people were posting that the voice actor actually is in like a Vocaloid group of some sorts, or like he he participates in as like a rapper in in some of their songs. And I was mm-hmm. like, oh, that's super cool because he was a, a lyrical genius during that rap battle, and it was uh, it shows his chops really well. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, now I'm looking up if uh, Nanami's singing voice has done anything else. I don't see anything. But yeah, it's a so, uh, fun show. That series is it's done, right? It's not a two core one because I know PA works like to, to do that a lot. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll I'll probably buy the Blu-ray when it comes out because it it certainly seems like a thing that I would enjoy. Like the more I looked into it. <laughs> Nice. Hopefully, it comes in one of those Sentai collector's edition with like a baseball cap. Ooh, <laughs> I'm <that'd down>. be <laughs> cool. <laughs> or if it came with like, uh, yeah, like a CD and and mm-hmm. some other extras like that would be really cool. A pair of headphones. Ooh. <laughs> Sentai <laughs> like, loves their get gimmick like items. Komei's fan or something. Yeah. Oh, Komei's fan. Yeah, that'd be great. that would be sick. <laughs> or his ridiculous sunglasses. One of his pairs <laughs> of ridiculous sunglasses. Yes. Uh, I I do I, love about the show that like they didn't focus too hard on the whole like isekai pr- mm. pr- a premise thing. It's like he gets dropped in to Tokyo one day and he's like, "Oh, I must be in hell because there's just a bunch of people." It was like Halloween. And he's like, "All these people mm. dressed up." It's like whatever. And then he realizes, "Oh no, wait. I'm just in the modern world, I guess, and I've been given a second chance." All right, I'm just going to do what I did best <laughs> then, but with just cool with it. New. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They just so roll, with, roll with the punches. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, I feel like he adapts better than any isekai protagonist I've ever seen because it's just this super old timey tactician from, you know, uh, what is it? Uh, Three Kingdoms era China. And he just gets dropped in this world and he becomes like the social media master and like (laughs) goes around to all the club scenes and like everyone loves Kome like yo Kome like Aiko's been in this scene her entire life and she doesn't even know this many people 
Yeah, Three Kingdom buffs, definitely check this show out because there are literally <laughs> several characters that are also super into Three Kingdoms. And it's funny because they just kind of accept that he's, he's Kome. And mm-hmm. like, you don't know if they literally do or not, but they, at that point, they're like, that's who he is. And he knows his character well, I guess. Right. Yeah, there's a few times where the owner, like, you see him thinking that this guy is just a big fan who cosplays all the time and then starts to wonder is it really him yeah and then they just call him co because they're like well, well that's who he is so yeah I guess. <laughs> and then yeah most of this scene in modern day should be uh, the people are just like yeah it's that dude who dresses up like he's in old-timey china and speaks like uh he's really formal he's awesome yeah. everyone loves him uh i i will say I thought the music in the show was really good, but I did wish that there was a little more diversity in the songs that they made for the show. Uh, mm-hmm. There were like one or two songs that were like Echo's big songs that she was working on the whole time. And there was a good stretch of like five or six episodes where she's just practicing that one song and getting better at it. And it's cool to see her style change as she really gets the idea for the song and her inspirations for it. But I don't know, I guess I would have liked a few more tracks that can land on like an ost or something yeah um, for sure. and if they could have implemented the uh i forget his name but the the rap character uh they really built it up that he was going to be like a main act along with Aiko for the mm-hmm. finale and it was more like all right we brought him here to like diss the opposing band and get them riled up diss and the now, audience yeah and be like hey yo you guys they're posers and y'all are posers for liking them all right here's Aiko. <laughs> right yeah he basically just turned into a hype man yeah which i guess is fine but yeah i i agree with how much he was built up i was expecting like some big collaboration which would have been really cool Mm -hmm. because yeah they could have made that work but no it's just and i didn't think her final song was that great either it was Mm -hmm. i guess too ballady um and they did do the same song that cover of you know the artist that her and Nanami both love um, that same song over and over. So it was uh, a bit much, but yeah, it, it definitely allowed them to show how she grew and changed over time. Um, and yeah, Kabe Taijin uh, had some good sort of rap was. moments, um, but I was hoping for m- more integration with the, the other type of music in the finale. Yeah. Oh, also there's a, uh, Steve Aoki character. <laughs> yeah. What? Really? <laughs> yeah, they literally just do a... They show that picture of when Steve Aoki like throws the, the cakes or the pies into the crowd or whatever. They're like, oh yeah, this is very clearly him, but they call him yeah. Kid. Kido. Yeah, it's, yeah, Steve Kido. <laughs> yeah, they just literally traced over that photo. Yeah. Yeah, it's an interesting blend of elements that I was not expecting uh, to exist, to like, or to be nearly as good as it was. That's yeah. why I didn't watch it, because I'm like, this is too fucking all over the place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that's kind of been the MO for PA Works as of late. I really haven't gotten super into one of their shows since the the one where they like ran a summer camp. I forgot what that one was called. But, uh, ran a summer camp? Yeah, or like I they were like know a, this because a, they were they're like my a tu- favorite. But I they can't. were like a tourist soccer uh, quest. Oh, soccer quest! They weren't running a or, summer camp. Or it, it was a girl they were like who was a looking tourist. for a job, and she got accidentally hired as the queen of a town, <laughs> and then was just part of the town revitalization community. It wasn't a summer camp. <laughs> sorry, sorry, it's been a while. <laughs> what I I'm, fucking what love <laughs> that show. <laughs> it was a good show. What I'm trying to say is that, like, since then, I personally felt their track record has been kind of all over the place. There was that show that was like v- vampires and werewolves that was like pretty bad and uh, oh, they, oh, that's right they did that show yeah it's like pa works so many of their shows are the same thing that i'm always surprised when one of them is different like it mm-hmm. took me like several episodes to realize the show was pa works <laughs> and i just forget about all these I, other shows. i noticed them immediately because of the, the art style they are the yeah. best at cute girls so, That's true. But yeah, there yeah. there are a lot of shows that are just about uh, a series of cute girls working in a specific right. environment, which right. are which, my hey, favorite. That is my yeah, favorite yeah. genre of, of anime. Say, it sells, so I get it. 
Uh, speaking yeah, when, of, I need when, to watch the Shirobako movie still. I have not done that. Yeah, oh, I, I have to watch either. that. Yeah. I think uh, they are now dubbing it after having released it sub only on Blu ray originally. Mm. So we'll see where that goes. Nice. But yeah, I, uh, I like seeing PA Works branch out and do different things. Because, um, yeah, they have a high standard of quality most of the time. Um, <laughs> so good to see. It looks they, like uh, uh, Kome is their second highest rated uh, work on Mal. Uh, the okay. first being Machia and oh, okay. Shirobako being 0. 0.02 decimal places or 0. <laughs> 0.02 points underneath Kome. Oh, <laughs> really? Under Kome? Interesting. Uh, I, 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 I guess recency binds. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Well, definitely yeah, worth checking fun. out, though. Your boy Kome. Good show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. What next? Hmm. I chose the last one, so one of you guys has to choose now. That's the well. Point. Well, you chose something for us to talk about. Now mm-hmm. I want to choose something for you to talk about. I would sure. say be- between your two to four pick, which one do you want to talk about the most? My two to four pick. Um, I'll 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 talk about Kaginato because uh, I watched the last episode today. And okay. I want to say, and I think I said this in one of the last episodes, but season two is so much better than the first season. Um, they finally introduced all the Angel Beats characters, so the entire season essentially revolved around uh, Yuripe just fucking being herself and trying to take over the school. Um, oh, and it like was just really thing. good. And okay. Kaginato has always been super self-aware and doesn't mind poking fun at a lot of the serious parts of key uh and so just that contrast in itself is fantastic but uh there was a part of the last episode today and it's i guess it's kind of a spoiler but it's also kaginato so it's not really a spoiler (laughs) um but there's a part of the last episode where like the art style kind of goes back to normal and mm. it's just like Ushio in the, the planetarium with the planetarian girl whose name escapes me. And then Nagisa and Tomoya show up and they just like pick her up. And it was just like this really heartwarming moment that I was like, oh, it's, it's still key at its heart. It, like it still can do the really heartwarming moments. And for like a good two minutes, the show just broke out of comedy and went back to normal. And it made me smile and remember why I like the studio so much. Uh, other than that, though, there's not really much more to talk about in terms of Kaginato because with 13 episodes, it was like a total of, I don't know, like 40 minutes of material. Uh, and it was 40 minutes of fun material, but it's still 40 minutes of material regardless. And most of it is uh, you can just throw out. Oh, and it's not done either. Um, huh. I don't even know if the second season is done because... It like makes it seem like it's done, but then it says "see you soon?" question mark, and it's not mm-hmm. marked as complete on my anime list. So I don't know what the future of Kaginato holds, uh, but I'll definitely watch more. Um, and I I definitely want them to start incorporating more characters outside of the, I guess, uh, mo- older key works because like we don't have uh summer pockets yet which hasn't gotten its anime yet and we don't have um fuck what was the other one? Oh, charlotte yeah charlotte's not in there and oh, charlotte Forget yeah that's that a show that show. exists um <laughs> but i think that this show uh would be good for the charlotte characters because they are exaggerated as key typically does and i, I want to see more of the uh the key universe kind of merged together but yeah, uh, Kaginato season two, definitely worth a watch if you watched the first season. It's it's really funny in a lot of subtle ways. Um, one more thing, and this is a major spoiler for Little Busters, but there's a uh, part of one episode where just everybody's on a bus and every time the bus turns, all of the Little bus char- little Busters characters like jump and it's not like oh, they don't draw no. attention to it or anything. It's just like a <laughs> subtle background thing that's hilarious if you know the the source material. Damn. <laughs> it looks like it is marked as being done. Oh, it wasn't earlier today. Hmm. So, 
cool yeah. i did watch it like as soon as it came out i was gonna say you you like saw it it drop and you're like bam they yeah, didn't even the subtitles ready you're right like away. go <laughs> <laughs> all right well yeah we're, we'll probably get more maybe next year or something i don't know when the summer pockets anime is gonna happen but it will oh, yeah and I'm very excited for it because I feel like that um, has the potential to be one of the, the well-adapted visual novels. We're uh, getting a new key show this next season, aren't we? Are we? Yeah. Let me look up my thing. Uh, Prima Doll. Oh, yeah. That is key. Yeah. I forgot about that cool <laughs> yeah hopefully it's not garbage like yeah, hopefully not the last several <laughs> yeah they've uh been striking out is that a pun because all of their works have baseball <laughs> it wasn't supposed to be um <laughs> but yes <laughs> kestrel's got got the uh the the puns on on lock ready <laughs> for them at any moment Uh, so yeah, speaking of bad key shows and bad PA work shows, I fucking hated the day I became God. Anyway, go. On. You know, <laughs> I, I, I don't hate it. I think that it did a lot of good things, but I feel like, and I felt the same way about Charlotte. Like half of it just didn't need to exist. Mm-hmm. The second and half, right? It's just, I don't know. June Maeda is trying to do too much or something. <laughs> it's like you can clearly see, like there is a shell of a really good idea here and just it wasn't filled in properly like i think the the last show had a lot of really um dramatic moments that that got to me and i liked the characters a lot and i think the mahjong episode was fucking hilarious but then there was an entire like weird subplot with like the one guy who was like good at technology that i just didn't understand at all and it was weird. <laughs> yep. It's too much for 13 episodes. Yeah, that's what tends to happen. Like, yep. he, he's used to writing 40-hour visual novels, 50, yep. 60, 70-hour visual novels. <laughs> it, like, gets to episode 12, and he's like, wait, I only have one more? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I feel like... Uh, and I don't know if it's true or not, but I heard something about how he was uh, really upset by the reception of that show. Because it was like a, apparently a story he like cared a lot about. And then everybody was like, you suck. <laughs> He's just like, oh, <laughs> that's Maybe not surprising. You should have cared a little more. Uh, so I. I'm both of you watched Comey season two. I would have, but I just didn't get around to it. I barely caught up on the first season, like uh, like months after it ended, so I did not get to partake in that yet. But I think I'm fur- far enough in the manga that it would have covered most of season two, so I guess I wanted to hear what y'all think about it compared to the first one, and if you think it the the whole shtick of it is getting stale or what, oh, yeah. what what's the general consensus oh, yeah. it's 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 getting stale um but it's still fun and entertaining i'm just at the point now where i'm i'm watching for like two characters well a, a third one because i really like yo-yo girl who just showed up <laughs> um but yamai is fucking amazing and i love her and Onamine is just everybody's big sister. And like those they're, those two are the reason that I'm still watching the show, just because I like those characters so much. But as a show, it doesn't really do anything anymore. <laughs> um, I think it's funny the, that you mentioned Yamai. I, I feel like I, li- I like that you mentioned that because every episode thread that I read about the show that's the character that most people were like i just need her to never be on the screen and yeah. the show will be better they're wrong <laughs> no, no, no. oh let's let's stop right there All right. <laughs> if yamai was male then dj would be saying this character fucking ruins this show if yamai <laughs> was male she would be mineta 
So yes. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. She's but, just girl Mineta. Yeah, and she's cute and it makes it okay. Oh my god. She's, <laughs> she's better than Mineta though because she doubles down on it. She really is just the she most straight vulgar up kidnaps person. kidnaps Tadano. <laughs> yeah. It's awesome. <laughs> Yamai is just a predator. There's nothing good about her. She's cute. That's good. Oh my god. <laughs> I can't remember what anime it was in, but there's one anime where, oh, you know, I think it was a Sing Yesterday for me, uh, where the fucking dude behind the counter at the convenience store who's not the protagonist just says, cute girls are allowed to do whatever they want. And that has become my motto ever since that has happened, because it's true. They really are. And I will I will still love them. I literally watched an episode of Komi-san this season and said to myself, I swear to fucking God, if DJ likes Yamai. <laughs> you know <because> I will. <laughs> She's I, so blatantly creepy and obsessive and so lesbian, and I love it. <laughs> yeah, being a lesbian does not give you the right to be a predator. No, but like, it makes for fun comedy. <laughs> <laughs> She's just me, Nana. No. <laughs> She doesn't I think have the, gray pair. <laughs> I think the character that I I liked the most out of like the the more newer introduced side characters was uh, Katai, the like big gruff looking <laughs> dude that everyone He's thinks fun. is scary. Yeah, yeah, he was definitely one of the ones I always liked. Uh, I like the narcissist dude more than Katai though, because he, he's just he's, fucking he's great too. Anime yeah. protagonist, yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> Um, did they get to the point in season two where they introduced uh, Rumiko, the like Gyaru character? No. Okay. Okay. Well, but I like those, so mind. I'm looking forward yeah. to that. Now we got yeah. Yo Yo Girl, and I <laughs> like Yo Yo Girl a lot. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, that was a fun arc. I, uh, it was, you know, it was kind of. I didn't know how I felt about it going into like a fucking like a vacation arc with just two random characters that we've never seen before because that's mm-hmm. normally like the you use the the school trip to like strengthen relationships that already exist and this was the first time I saw a show do the opposite and I think it worked really well. That was a it was a fun episode. I also like the dynamic between uh, the the sibling characters with uh, Komi's younger brother and Tadano's sister. I feel like mm-hmm. it was an interesting like it's almost the same dynamic, but it's it's kind of f- flipped in a in a way. But uh, I thought I thought those two were cute, so I hope they get a little bit more uh, screen time at some point. But, uh, yeah, I'm I'm glad we were introduced to a few new characters. Um, the narcissist and the school trip characters because yeah before that and without the school trip and everything this season did feel like it was just kind of treading water yeah just kind of giving us the same stuff we had already seen with the characters we already knew just kind of yeah. using you know their established tropes to have jokes um and i guess caught at the beginning of the season um so yeah i'm glad i mixed it up a little bit but it is uh not so fresh it's definitely no kaguya sama oh yeah not no. at all not even close but it's it's still a show that I'm I'm not really like concerned about dropping because it's entertaining mm-hmm. enough for me to like watch it and want to watch it. But does it right. do anything remarkable? No. It's just good. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I just you know, think back to that first episode and think of yep. how much more it could be oh, man. twenty four episodes in. After that episode, and I talked about that, I was like, this is gonna be fucking the shit. Uh, mm-hmm. And it's just all been downhill from there because <laughs> that first episode was so good. Yeah, that yeah. was that was quite a high bar they set. I was like, wow, they're gonna take this adaption, and this is gonna be like the next Nietzsche Joe. They're just gonna like go yeah. balls to the wall. But, oh god, that chalkboard scene that was amazing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, just having that balance of comedy and poignancy, um, and being able to execute both that well is something that you know shows can do really well and become really great for and this one had the opportunity to but it's just been so heavily relying on kind of the same gags over and over but it's fun i like it yeah dj didn't talk about the fact that it apparently looks like shit now i didn't watch today's episode yeah um yeah so kestrel hasn't seen the latest episode and i think it's episode 11 
Um, mm. But yeah, the one that came out today looked fucking bad. It was just mm. like noticeably not animated by the same people. And it seemed... <sighs> it's hard to describe because like it still looks like Komi-san. It just looks like a really watered down shittier Komi-san with very minimal motion. Hmm. It's just a lot of uh the, the characters looked off. Like their the proportions of their faces were inconsistent and different just between every single shot and it was just like almost changing art styles in certain other shots and it was I know Komi-san likes to do that and they do like the the exaggerated like chibi-ish characters sometimes especially with Komi, but this is like a a completely different thing. Um, and it just it doesn't look good. <laughs> I, I want it to go back to looking normal. Uh, speaking on the character designs, just like as a whole for the show, I feel like one thing I've had a hard time coming to grips with is that Comey's character design is just like at a uncanny valley level of like I'm not sure if I like it or not because I I I really like her character design in the manga, but there's just something about how it looks in the anime that doesn't. Yeah come off how i think it's supposed to but like I all agree. the all the like mm-hmm. chibi like cat ear comey faces they all look perfect and they're hilarious and cute but like i don't know yeah there's something about her standard yeah. character design that's just like a little her un- face is too. too tiny that's what it is it's yeah. like just all <laughs> yeah. of her features she is just like like two percent of her face to, like dedicated to her features and then all of the rest is just skin and then her hair is too big yeah that's a big one too is that if they kept the like consistency of that first episode like her like her yeah that's one of the things it's her hair is just like this big it doesn't look like hair it's i don't know (laughs) it's kind of like a weird hat yeah (laughs) (laughs) i still don't get fucking tadano's flower thing i just always thought it was supposed to be like his colic but they literally like that's a cowlick but it's that's the thing they reference it they're like hair they're like, what is that? It's like, oh, it's just, I, it's, I, it's part of me. I don't know. <laughs> it's just weird. It's part of his character design. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I agree that Comey's normal design it definitely seems off for her, you know, being this apparent gorgeous yeah. supermodel of their world. And, I mean, I guess the, the really small face uh, in a big head thing is kind of Katai's character design, too. Yep. Um, <laughs> but it's kind of supposed to be a joke with him and with her it just looks weird and yeah her big hair hat thing too um (laughs) just doesn't look good and i don't know i just feel like it's like weirdly angular in some ways um it's just everything about her is wrong yeah (laughs) which is weird because you're supposed to think that she's so gorgeous and i do love that at this point in the series she's almost always in chibi mode yep Um, (laughs) i love that (laughs) yeah it's really great because yeah you're right she always looks great in that it's always hilarious yeah uh, and then you know she breaks out of it for like one shot when they have to talk about how beautiful she is it's like oh but you then look like she that looks weird. <laughs> honestly they should just make season three like kaginato chibi style <laughs> to cut the episodes down to five to ten minutes and i think we got a working formula <laughs> oh um before i forget uh this is Komi-san season two is probably a top five all-time ending theme for me. It's I've so heard good, good stuff about it. I love the art too. Yeah, I really love the like rotoscoped style. Like Eight-bit rotoscope. It's weird. I yeah, love it. 8-bit rotoscope, exactly. Yeah, and just the attention to detail in the character acting to yep. make every single character so well realized at every point in the shot at every moment. Yep. I watch a different character every single episode. <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> so much going on. All, All right. right. What do we got next? Hmm. Whose turn is it to pick? Kestrel, you want to make a... Let's read another one of Kane's. Yeah, oh, sure. that's, that's a good idea. Yeah, I mean, we might as well talk about Spy Family before we uh, run out of time. Um, we're doing good. We're only an hour in. Yeah. Um, 
So for Spy Family, Kane says, still a lot of fun. Enjoy the family dynamic. I hope Lloyd makes overtime pay in future seasons. I hope the pace picks up a little bit as the slowness near the end of this season bordered on stagnant in terms of Operation Strix and stuff and such. Mm. I think that's fair. It it definitely the the show is not afraid to just kind of like slow it down. And I thought it was interesting that they chose the final episode to be one of the end volume extra chapters but yeah personally i don't mind the pacing just because i think the adaption so far has just like more fully realized an art like already a great source material and specifically the episodes with the the castle and the dodgeball game were just great examples of the production team just showing love for the series and taking the care to like just go all out with it and like make it even better than it already was so i don't know i think i think spy family did has done everything that its adaptation needed to be so far and i've been loving it i agree yeah it is like i've always loved the manga but this adaptation is elevating it way beyond that at every turn great direction great animation great music great voice acting so good and yeah it's uh speaking of you know finale season finales that you would not think were a season finale unless you looked it up uh <laughs> yeah this one was pretty anticlimactic but i haven't right. watched the last episode yet it's fun i will say i'm glad that uh anya became the cultural icon i knew she was destined <laughs> yep. to be because I see her everywhere I on Twitter and Instagram and stuff. So, like, she definitely hit all the marks, and the voice actress is amazing with her. So, uh, she is yeah, a this, walking meme. It is fantastic. Yeah, for real. She should really just get her own spin off at some point. I mean, she, she kind of like. National treasure. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I like Spy Family. I don't like it nearly as much as most people do, I think. Um,. Mm. I I still enjoy it though. Like there's there's not really anything I dislike about it. It's just there's not really anything I love about it either. It's just a fun show that's really well made and Anya is the best. Here's what here's what would take it from a B to an A for DJ if Siscon sibling was a sister instead of a brother. I think that's I think that's the key we need to unlock the that's full true. potential. Yeah. You know, I think you're right. <laughs> I mean, he's just like my least favorite part of the show, but I thought he was at least less cringy in the anime because of the over the topness. And uh, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Him just like pounding wine and be like thinking of all the bad things that could be happening. I loved it. I also love any excuse to listen to Saudi Hayami. So, right. Mm-hmm. That's true. Yeah, I can't wait uh, for Anime X this or Anime Expo this weekend when every single cosplayer is your. Oh yeah. Oh god, yeah, all of them. <laughs> like walking around, like, if they have a kid, the kid is Anya. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I hope we get full. Yeah, spy family families out there. When I'm yeah. definitely going to see lots of cosplay pictures. You I'm- know, just kind of visually. I can kind of see uh, them as grown-up Kaguya and Shiragana. Yeah. <laughs> I can see it, too. <laughs> I, I've seen plenty of fan art that confirms that. That makes that, sense. Yes. <laughs> that makes sense. I also like the fact that, for the most part, obviously there are going to be liter- like piles and piles of Rule 34 yor. I am <sighs> glad, for the most part, all of the fan art I've seen online has been very wholesome. <laughs> and like, oh, just not like, me. <laughs> well I, yeah. I have a different community <laughs> that's true that's for sure that's, that's fair but for the most part lots of it very wholesome your and uh lloyd vibes but yeah there's plenty of room she for the a, uh debauchery stuff too certainly the girl of the season there's been a distinct girl of every season this year so far no mm-hmm Oh wait, we're only on the second season, so right? <laughs> I thought we were on the third for a second. All right, well, uh, it's not Marin, so. Ooh. Well, th- uh, this season isn't Marin. Yeah. Yeah, I, I will say just 
for Spice Family's sake that it's not one of those shows where you have to be like, oh, don't worry, by the second season it's going to be like, it's like the stakes are going to be higher, there's going to be craziness. I feel like it's just a very consistent read and it's really good at balancing its comedy and its wholesome family moments and the uh, as much as uh, Kane was wishing for a little bit more Operation Strict stuff, it does start to become a little bit more pertinent to the story. So I don't mm-hmm. think there's anything to worry about with the second core coming in the fall. I think it'll be more of the same, which is uh, perfectly fine, in my opinion. Yeah, like there's definitely some arcs that are more substantial as the series goes on uh but you know it's just as fun to watch anya just be a treasure in class so whatever we get it's good and the pacing has been really good so far as well yeah all right is that all we want to say about that show yeah i think so good show watch spy family yeah and yeah, it's coming back in three months, so not too long to wait. What's next? <laughs> um, Kes, can you real quickly talk about Blue Lock? Because that was a show that I was planning to watch at the beginning of the season and for some reason I just didn't and I really had no inclination to pick it up at any point and I really heard nobody talking about it either so it just kind of like flew under the radar for me so I, I wasn't even sure if it was worth a watch um I assume you're talking about Awashi yeah it is, is that Blue Lock or no, the soccer Blue one? Lock is an anime also about soccer that starts in uh October Oh, <laughs> well, there you go. That's why I didn't watch it, I guess. <laughs> but Ao does mean blue, so I can see between yeah. those various factors where you were going. Is <laughs> uh, that yeah, the I'll soccer one? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, it is a good sports show. Um, it is nothing special, uh, but, you know, it's a production IG sports show, which are always pretty high quality. Um, it's got, you know good music um good animation obviously from ig and you know the the premise is pretty straightforward pretty standard shown in sports stuff um i guess technically it was in a scene in manga but i don't know it feels like any shown in sports manga to me mm-hmm. um but yeah it's basically just this uh kid who's really good at playing soccer but never really had any formal training and is from a small town where he's the big fish and the rest of his team just kind of existed to support him and then he gets kind of recruited by this big uh trainer from tokyo who takes him into this youth league um and then he's got to kind of learn how to actually work with a team um and not just be a solo guy who he thinks is the king that everyone should be supporting um so you know very standard sports anime yeah. tropes um but it's pretty good and you know obviously he's actually a genius and just doesn't realize it and everyone around him is like whoa he's actually a genius but he's got to like learn the fundamentals of soccer and how to work as a team and then he can become one of the greatest players whatever would you say it leans more on the superpower sports side or the real sports side uh it's definitely more real sports uh but he kind of has like a superpower in that he can just visualize he can he has like a perfect memory of where everyone is uh at all times and now they're getting to the point where he can kind of like foresee where everyone is going to go um so it's getting a little more super powery but for the most part it's pretty grounded just sports it he just kind of has like insane intuition it reminded me um and i haven't watched it but looking at it uh it- like and obviously production ig has a big part of it but it seemed like another version of run with the wind um Mm -hmm. is it i'm assuming it's nowhere near as good as that based on what you've said yeah definitely not as good definitely more generic okay um yeah like i don't think anyone 
on this podcast has watched any of Ace of Diamond, which is extremely long. Yeah. Um, but it's pretty similar to that. Um, it's got kind of Haikyuu vibes in kind of like the the second main character of Haikyuu, Kageyama. Um, the some similar thing. elements to, to his character. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd say Ace of Diamonds probably the, the closest, but it just uses a lot of standard sports anime tropes um and you know does a decent job with them looks great sounds pretty good um has an interesting enough character arc but nothing special gotcha i gotta i gotta watch run with the wind i heard really good stuff about that it's mm-hmm. so good we all praised it a lot on this podcast too <laughs> yeah hmm. i think uh both kane and dj put it on their top 10 list for two years because yep. it yep. spanned like <laughs> fall to winter it yeah. was so good nice. it's like like another one of those every single character is important things mm-hmm. so i like that nice hmm. okay. what else do we want to talk about what uh? What else did Kane have? Was that his last one or no? He had one more for Ahadensan, which I dropped and Brandon watched, so I can talk about that. So he yeah. said the show grew on me over time. By the way, his ranking he ranked stuff. Isn't that exciting? Whoa! Uh, wow. His ranking was Spy Family, then Ahadensan, then Birdie Wing. Um, so for Ahadensan, he said the show grew on me over time. I was rather enjoying it by season's end. I wish there were fewer jokes towards the end based off Raido's wild imagination about Ahaden's activities. <laughs> they are fun when spaced a little further apart and have some relevance to the actual action, sometimes way too far off the mark. I'll disagree with Kane on that end, because I think one of my favorite aspects of the show was Raido just thinking that any small thing that Aharen did was like some big huge conspiracy and he would just get like shut down immediately and be like, oh no, it's something much more normal, I guess. But, yeah, this show for me was, I would put it in the category of lunchtime anime, where I wasn't extremely engaged with it, but I, it was something I would, like, throw on while I'm, like, eating lunch, or I'm, like, between doing stuff, and it's just, like, a nice little, nice little, like, appetite quencher, just, like, very standard, like, it was, it was pretty funny, the, like, romance bits were, like, pretty good nothing nothing special all around and it's you know it's very much pushing on a a a a subgenre of anime that has gotten very popular recently with like komi-san and this whole like oh there's this girl that like everyone's interested in but it's just like she's really quiet or like there's some quirk about her that everyone's like whoa what's up what's the deal with that but uh yeah that is becoming a genre isn't it (laughs) yeah but yeah it was it was a decent show and it, it had a good rounded off payoff i mean it it came nowhere near uh kaguya-sama payoff levels but i mean it had a payoff and i think that was good i didn't expect that i honestly expected the the comedy part of rom-com to be more so the focus but the the ending surprised me a bit in that aspect Yeah. yeah, I definitely found it to be just kind of, you know, telling the same joke every episode. And so halfway through, I was like, yeah, maybe it'll have something else up its sleeve, but I'm kind of bored. So I just dropped it. Yeah, I was surprised by how well received it was because it was always one of the like top, like the like our anime threads for it were always really highly praised and stuff. And I was like, I can see why people enjoy it. And it like hits all its elements. Well, it's just like you said, it's kind of boring. It doesn't really keep my attention. I, I could not watch two episodes in a row. It was definitely... I had to space it out each week. But yeah, decent show. Yeah, interesting. Looking at my own grades right now, I've got Kaguya-sama at A+, Komi-san at B+, and Ahadan-san at C+. Yeah. Well, there you go. I think that's fair. Range of quality for sure. Yeah. Um, I'd like to hear your thoughts on the newest season of uh, Legend of the Galactic Heroes because I feel like nobody is watching the new adaption and I think that's unfair because I think it's pretty good yeah I mean you know as someone who loves the original um, 
I have issues with how this one is adapting things and changing things. Um, but yeah, it's pretty good content um, that we're getting into now. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I guess the pacing is about the same. Um, mm-hmm. I just wish we got more than like 12 episodes at a time because there's just so much to dig into and having to wait. At least we just keep having them announced and coming out not too long after the previous seasons. We've already got season four on the way. Um, yeah, I think it's one of those things that will be more highly received and talk about once it's finished in however many years that'll take. Yeah, hopefully they get enough seasons to get all the way through it. What, what would you say... Or the because I still haven't watched the OVA, but what would you say they're changing about it that you don't like so much? I mean, I think plot wise, also I, I guess I should you know be fair to it. It is a new adaptation of the novel series. It's not intending to be a remake of the OVA series per se, mm. um, which is you know an important distinction when it's like why do the characters look so different? Well, because they weren't necessarily drawn in the source material. So if you just ignore the previous adaptation, then it's fair for them to look totally different. Um, but yeah, I think just, you know, it, it's, it's a different style, obviously, 30 plus years later. Um, so things are going to feel really different. Uh, the way it looks is kind of a big thing. Um, I just feel like the, the old one had so much charm and character and care put into it. And this one just kind of looks like, you know, shiny plastic Bishonen um, <laughs> and lots of CG and stuff. So, you know, it just feels less, I don't know, yeah, like it has less um, humanity behind it. Uh, That's fair. And yeah, I guess the, the pacing is roughly the same, um, but just like some of the orders of events and how much time they dedicate to certain pieces versus others and character moments um some of them just feel a little less earned a little less impactful um as a result and you know i can totally see like if you have no experience with the property uh just getting to see this story unfold um would be really satisfying because it's you know the first time you're seeing it it's got a lot going on uh and i think it will also be better once it is all out or at least you can watch in bigger chunks because you know it's a slow burn so 12 episodes at a time you don't always get through that much really valuable material um but yeah i think once it's all said and done if someone just sits down and watches the whole thing especially if they have no preconceived notions or any knowledge of the prior adaptation i think yeah it's a really strong story it's it's not ruining anything about the underlying story um so you know you can really only generate something good out of that baseline yeah yeah i I was fine with the the pacing of this season like you said it's like pretty consistent overall but I don't know. So there's there was something about this season in particular that was like slightly less uh, appealing to me. I don't know if it was like the the like battle tactics themselves didn't feel as ingen uh, uh, like the ingenuity behind like what was going on didn't feel as like because I mean the whole thing is like oh Yang is the magician like the master like they'll they'll like they'll he'll pull some crazy stunt that no one has ever seen before and it it just didn't really feel like that too much this season but i did enjoy some of the highlights of the lesser known characters like uh julian becoming a soldier and like getting his stuff going and more stuff from like the galactic empire uh the like underlings getting their shine as they go into the big space uh death ball battle and stuff but uh yeah I, th- I thought it was overall like a good season but yeah it is one of those things where it's like all right now i gotta wait however long to like see more so yeah, yeah. it doesn't really lend itself to 12 episode seasons very well because mm-hmm. you can't necessarily come to like a good climactic finale in that kind of length of time yeah i, like, almost... I think two cores it would have been good because um that's kind like it was released you know as an ova so Mm -hmm. uh it it was volume by volume in japan originally um so it doesn't 
really follow the same format, but if they just did two cores at a time, it would roughly follow the original release pattern where it was like 28 episode chunks. Um, 27, 28. Because uh, like the second season had a really impactful finale, um, yeah. which was you know plot-wise the end of the first 28 episode chunk of the original OVA series. Mm. Um, so if they did it in that size, I think the seasons would feel more well-rounded and fleshed out. Yeah, I'm almost... I'm curious if I would even like it better in the movie format because that's mm. that's the other confusing thing about right. these releases is that most of the time people don't know when the new seasons are coming because it's just like, oh, yeah, the movie happened already, but we're just going to like cut it up into seasons and then drop them and then Crunchyroll won't even like advertise for it or tell you that it's in the new season. You just got to find right. it. Because it doesn't start at the same time as the rest of the season, so it's just like, yeah. you know, in the last month of the previous season, you just suddenly get episode one of this new one. And then you look online and it's like, wait, does this season even exist? Because it's really just a movie trilogy. Yeah, it's yeah. Weird. Yeah. But, yeah, as someone who hasn't watched the OVA, I am enjoying it. But I do have to take a crack at the, the OG at some point. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, when the remake first started, I was like, damn, this kind of sucks. But then as it went on, I was, and especially since I rewatched the original around that same time, I was like, oh yeah, the first 12 episodes aren't that great anyway. You really mm-hmm. got to get into the, the second chunk of it, or, you know, the later teens to 20s to really get some great content out of it. And yeah, now that cool it's stuff. in that material, I'm like, yeah, all right, this is a good show. It's not a masterpiece, but it's a good show. Yeah, I mean, it's at least a uh, breath of fresh air compared to most other, I don't know, you, like the space dramas just really aren't a thing mm-hmm. anymore, so. For sure, yeah. Yeah, you only get space operas in the 21st century when they're remaking something from the 20th century. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, so that covers all of your shows that you didn't drop. Uh huh. Uh-huh. All of Kane's shows. Um, do you want to briefly talk about the one thing that you did drop, or move on to something else? Uh, for our list? We could we could move past it. Onipon okay. was like a short that was like I was interested because of literally because of the uh like an, an uh, like a Sakuga cut from the first episode, but like the mm. rest of it was like a typical. Just like, oh, what are they transforming with their Oni pants this episode? And like, I thought the voice acting was good, but I don't know. I got to an episode where the whole episode was like a big pun on Momotaro and like different parts of Japan. It's like, oh, the story of Momotaro is different in this region, in this region. And I was like, wow, this is the most boring shit I've ever seen. So I dropped it. <laughs> that sounds super Yeah, cool. it, Like the fact that it's a short and it still couldn't keep my attention, like just spoke right. a lot to the fact that I didn't need to bother to keep watching it. Honestly, I feel that way about most shorts uh, because I feel like with that length of time, you just can't actually deliver anything of value. And Mm -hmm. so even at, you know, two to five minutes, it's still a waste of time because, you know, it's not going to go anywhere. Yeah. Except when they eventually release uh, Inferno Cop Season 2, which I think (laughs) is confirmed, but I don't know. Yeah, it's trigger. That, that, so that yeah, trigger yeah. though. So yeah, that's yeah. a whole different ballpark. Like when, when you were talking earlier about like you know shows that give you a preview for the next season, um, but it never happens. Like Panty and Stocking mm. was what first came to my mind, and like the uh, the soundtrack to that show, which I fucking love. Yeah. Um, the uh, the last track has like a, a hidden track at the end after ten minutes of silence where it's just the characters advertising season two, or it's like Panty really enthusiastically talking about everything that's going to happen in season two, and then Stalking just trying to like talk her down, being like, well, we can't say that. It's not actually confirmed yet. We don't have the, the rights to do anything about it. Yeah. But yeah, Trigger. Trigger's funny. Yeah. I, I also thought there was like, there was something that happened that probably has delayed the production because i think like the voice actor for inferno cop passed away or like there was some mm. there was some like death that i was like oh that does not spell good for a potential sequel so we'll see triggers doing so many other things anyway so it's yeah. i i could not see inferno cop being that high of a priority it probably doesn't make them any money 
I mean, but it's Trigger, though, so they don't care. They just shit post half the time. That's true. That's true. I think the cyberpunk anime looks better than the game was, so I'm <laughs> looking forward to that. Yeah, I'm definitely, like, even though I have no attachment to the game or the original or anything, uh, it's Imaishi, which is always intriguing. Mm-hmm. I thought the game was neat. <laughs> I think I've heard the the most positive things about that game and the most negative things about Elden Ring from DJ. Yeah, <laughs> sounds fair. Well, it, well, okay. Cyberpunk was extremely broken, yes. but it was still fun. Elden yeah. Ring was a little bit broken and slightly fun. <laughs> okay. That's fair. <laughs> To each their own. I, I put down Elden Ring for about like two months, but I started getting back into it recently and I've been really sucked back into it, but I've played like all these games, so that's just par for the it's course. It's got like one of the coolest worlds in yeah. any game and really cool art design, but like every single FromSoft game has really cool art design. Yeah. I just don't think that makes for a fun game necessarily. Yeah, definitely the boss battles are like not the highlight compared to some of the previous ones. I killed every single boss in the game. I can't tell you the mechanics for like 95% of them. <laughs> Just run in, kill it, and then you're done. <laughs> yeah, I either get like roadblocked and I'm like, I'll come back later. Or I show up to a boss and I like three shot it. And I'm like, oh, I guess I should have fought you sooner. <laughs> All right, so that is everything that... Kane and Brandon have watched. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What else do we want to talk about that DJ and or I watched? Let's mm. see. We both watched Dance, 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 Soar. That was my, my number two of the season. It was way down your list at number eight, it looks like. Still a um, B, though. On and I, remember, I remember I asked you earlier on in the season, because I don't think that you were enjoying it very much, um what your biggest issues were with it and i i recall you saying that it was something like you just couldn't bring yourself to care about any of the other characters apart from the protagonist um did that remain true up to the very end because i i agreed with you at that point but i think that by the end of the series i had uh, at least in terms of luo had grown to like him a lot more as a character once you like actually get into his background and i think that the the final action of the anime was really great for him. Yeah, I agree. Um, his character definitely grew by leaps and bounds after we recorded that episode. Um, and that one episode, uh, was it episode five, maybe, um, where they do the Swan Lake performance? That was a oh, great man. episode. Yeah, that was good. It was- that was definitely like the highlight of the series for me. When he like jumps um, in the air and the fucking animation changes and he looks like a mm-hmm. monster, like oh man, that shit was good. Yeah, that was really well done. Uh, so yeah, I I do care about his character a lot um, after that episode and what follows it. Uh, so I I definitely like the series more than I did before. Mm. Um, I guess I, you know. I don't know where I was expecting it to go. Um, I think with its 11 episodes or whatever for this season, it didn't go far enough for me to get like really invested. Uh, That's fair. Like it needs at least another core to, to get there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's making good progress on building the characters, especially Luo. Uh, and I'm interested to see what happens next. But yeah, at this point, it's definitely too short for what it's trying to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I really do hope we get more. I don't think anything's been confirmed as of yet. But like you said, it's not a lot gets done in the yeah. 11 episodes that it gets. And it kind of stops at like um, a, a heavy moment. But it's not really a moment that resolves anything for the like bigger story at hand. Like there's just like some some big character growth that you get for both Junpei and Luo in the last episode. And after that, it's just kind of it ends. And then it's like, OK, well. Uh, kind of need to know what happens after this to really formulate a final opinion on the show because it kind of just it ends. Um, right, it was a very abrupt ending. Yeah, uh, I I did really like it though. I loved the animation. Um, I I wasn't a big fan of the 
like just the character art style in the beginning. Uh, they're really <laughs> long and lanky, and their faces are weirdly detailed. Um, and the rings in their eyes. Yeah, um, <laughs> but that I kind of liked. Um, really? But uh, I think for it being in anime, so not so focused, but entirely focused on ballet, um, having characters with exaggerated lanky features like that works to its advantage um mm-hmm. and i i kind of get it but yeah i i need more of it but what i did get i like a lot and i would absolutely um watch whatever happens next and i think that uh by the end of this year junpei and luo will probably still be two of my favorite male main characters um of the year I just think that they were really strong and I I wasn't really expecting that out of this show when I went into it. Yeah. Yeah, definitely as the characters are introduced, um, it definitely doesn't really clue you into how much depth you'll get into their characters. So I want to see more of that. I want to care that much about all of the main characters. Agreed. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, the visual style did put me off a bit. Um, and I don't like their eyes, <laughs> but <laughs> their eyes were cool. cool. <laughs> They're different. <laughs> uh, yeah, I definitely want more, and I bet you know it would just get better as it went on. Oh, definitely. Did either of you watch Welcome to the Ballroom a few mm-hmm. years ago? I didn't how finish you, it, but I watched. How would you like, say the first it compares? How would you say it compares to that? I got, um, and again, I didn't finish Welcome to the Ballroom, and I mentioned this after the first couple episodes of Dance, Dance, Dance Sore came out, but it reminded me a lot of Welcome yeah. to the Ballroom in terms of tone, in terms of animation, and just in terms of um, the situations the main characters are in. Uh, it, I don't, I, and again, didn't finish it, but um, <laughs> I'm sure it holds up. Um, and yeah, Welcome to the Ballroom is a show that I definitely want to go back and watch because i liked everything that i saw of it i think i just got really swamped with other stuff and i had to drop it for some reason Mm. yeah that show uh i had read all of the manga that had been released um when the show started uh and so i you know kind of went into it with high expectations because i really liked the manga um and i yeah i think i reviewed the whole show too Mm. um and it was a you know, it was a pretty decent adaptation. Um, I think the artwork in the manga and how the creator uses panel layouts, um, they didn't really replicate as well in, like, the direction animation. Um, I don't think it was quite as creative. Uh, and I think the music and dance animation could have been better for what kind of show it was. Um, but I think, I don't know, maybe just because I'm so invested in those characters and kind of already had that bias towards them to begin with um i like that show a lot more but again that one had like you know 24 episodes to Mm -hmm. flesh out its characters and storyline this one's only had like 11 so far so i think it could reach those heights at least of the anime adaptation of ballroom um but i i think the manga is a lot better anyway from what i remember the Around when the finale of Ballroom was coming out, the creator of the manga got sick or something, and yeah. they had to they had to delay it or whatever. And I, so I think the anime had an original ending. So I'm interested if it ever came back and f- wrapped up. Yeah, the manga. I I know there were like years where we didn't get a volume because of that, and then we just got a volume like in the past year or so. So hmm. um, I think it's back and i don't think like the manga has ended um so yeah i f- can't remember exactly how the anime ended uh but i don't remember it being like a significant departure i thought it was just kind of the end of an arc but maybe i'm misremembering that was like five years ago jesus that shit was five years ago wow jeez yeah yeah that's probably why i dropped it because five years ago i was moving to texas that's mm, that's what it was uh, it was that season yeah that makes sense but yeah uh still haven't played dance dance by fallout boy <laughs> the characters still haven't played dance dance revolution once wow. uh, zero out of ten that's messed up yeah i was misled <laughs> hmm. 
Uh, all right, anything else worth talking about from the season? Kate was watching De Aimon, wasn't she? Yeah. We could talk about that in her memory. <laughs> sure. Um, I liked it a lot. Uh, I definitely it was a candy, liked it more as one. the series went on. I thought that it was pretty boring in the beginning, but by the end, I actually like came around to caring about everything, everybody. Um, mm-hmm. But the thing I liked about the anime more than anything else is that I think it's the most Kanzai accent I've ever gotten out of one show. <laughs> and I am all about that because fucking everyone in this show had a Kanzai accent and I loved it. That's fun. Um, Brandon, yeah, it's the Japanese Sweets show. Okay. Japanese Sweets and guitars and uh, surrogate parenthood. Yeah, I like mm. those like father daughter shows, like the parent dynamic, yeah. but it's not actually like the real parent dynamic. Mom. Which is like half of those father daughter shows. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. And it's it's heartwarming when done correctly. And I think that this is one of those cases where it was done correctly. Yeah, it definitely didn't like hit me like some of those other shows have. Yeah. Um I thought it was just like, you know, a pleasant little mm-hmm. comfort watch. There's week. no like single really poignant moment. It's yeah. just gradual um closening of a relationship. <laughs> Yeah, I think in the middle there, uh, there were a few episodes where I was like, eh, this show's just kind of barely holding on. Yeah. Like, they, they weren't really doing anything to progress the story or the characters or the relationships. Um, and it was just kind of, you know, giving us the same stuff we had gotten already. Uh, but I stuck around, and I thought the, the back half, yeah, I ramped it up a little bit, and I cared definitely. more, and they, yeah. they definitely deepened the relationships, so that was good. The protagonist is still kind of annoying. Um, He's really annoying, but, but I <laughs> like I didn't like him at first, and I liked him by the end. So mm-hmm. I guess he kind of his his idiocy won me over. Yeah, like I feel empathetic and sympathetic for him, um, but I don't want to hang out with him. Yeah, <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> I I want him to have a happy life and a happy. Sir, good daughter. Please stay away from me. I don't want to hang out with him. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely a show that, like, I'll probably never think about again. Um, That's fair. (laughs) That's fair. I liked it while it was happening, though, and it got me uh, more into Japanese confections, so that's cool. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Yeah, like, I bought a, I went out and I bought, Costco had, like, a huge box of uh, assorted Japanese treats, and I got them, and I like, like, all of them, which is cool. Because I feel like the last time I tried like like real Japanese confection, I wasn't a fan. Uh, but I guess my taste has changed, and hooray! And uh, a lot of them <laughs> had walnuts in them, and uh, or no, not walnuts, chestnut, and like the chestnut yeah. manju were the thing that he was in the show. Mm-hmm. And so uh, that was that was a fun treat, literally. I gotta check out some wagashi shops in Little Tokyo. I keep forgetting oh yeah, there are probably like some real ones now. over there. Yeah. yeah, we've got a lot of um, like Chinese bakeries over here, mm-hmm. um, but no wagashi or anything. If anything, the show maybe inspired enough people to buy those like Japanese candy boxes, those like monthly subscription boxes. Right. So if anything, that it accomplished that much. <laughs> I f- I feel like. It's not the same thing, though. These are, like, artisan sweets. Oh, yeah. It's oh. very different from, like, candy. Gotcha. Yeah. Because, like, what was that show, uh, Degashikashi? Um, <laughs> that show it's was not, the thing that existed. <laughs> yeah, that was weird. Yeah. Um, but that was, like, all candy and snacks. This is, like, you know, and artisan Bulba. traditional sweets. Really expensive shit. Yeah. <laughs> Gotcha. That's like, uh, yeah. that, that, that kind of reminds me of, did any of you watch, uh, it was live action, but I think it was based off of a manga, but it was uh, Kentaro the Salaryman. No. That one was basically, it was a live action show where he's like a super uh, straight edge salaryman, but his whole shtick is that he's secretly between... Uh, doing like deliveries for his job he'll like go to a sweet shop that's like a real location and he'll just have like a 
like a food orgasm talking about the sweets at the shop and uh, promoting the real life shop which is pretty cool but it was funny it's about as close as like a a live action show could get to being an anime <laughs> but yeah, that was yeah i can't really imagine that food orgasm trope in live action yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they pull it off pretty well i will he say. just rips his clothes off <laughs> they, it's basically of the store. <laughs> yeah he like us he like they basically like 3d animated he'd like eat He'd eat, like, sweet beans, and then his, like, head would turn into a bean, and he'd get, like, drenched in syrup. It was pretty crazy. That sounds That's horrible. So Japanese. <laughs> it's, it's a good time, trust me. <laughs> I love when people just pour syrup all over me. <laughs> You'd be surprised. <laughs> um, Kestrel, yeah. why did you drop a couple of cuckoos? I mean, it was just sort of becoming a generic harem show and like i was cool with it becoming or being a generic uh romance show but the more that it just kind of started sinking into the tired tropes of like all right his crush is also gonna like him and his sister who's not a sister is also gonna like him and it's okay because she's not a sister but it's also kind of taboo because she's kind of a sister and that dynamic that was starting to form and was pretty clearly the direction it was going it was oh, yeah. just kind of <laughs> like not what i was into and i feel like you know it, even without that uh just it, its premise like a lot of these we've been talking about had kind of been used up um after a few episodes uh we got you know what made this story different out of the way and then it just started turning into the same tropes that you'd expect from any show like that. So, yeah, I agree completely. I just wanted <laughs> to uh, to hear it from you. <laughs> just a firm, yeah, firm um, belief. I don't know if I will follow through with it as well. And it's a two core show, which is mm. wild to me. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's really generic, and um, I absolutely hate the like highlighted lip anime style <laughs> oh. and i have never liked it and if i if you're if you have pronounced lips in an anime i'm probably gonna drop you because it just <laughs> doesn't look right to me it's weird yeah it's weird that it's so off-putting right because like <laughs> they're just people lips. <laughs> have lips you can see like that's just more realistic <laughs> Yeah, no, nope. yeah. <laughs> not an anime. Get it away. It's, <laughs> you're making them like one step too human at that I guess point. So. <laughs> like yeah. you become less of a cartoon once I can see your lips. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't mind that as much. I thought it looked fine. Um, and I think, you know, it kind of made sense for like the female characters who were obviously wearing lots of makeup and lipstick. Like, yeah, you could definitely see their lips. But. They were a little too big and shiny, I guess. Yeah, I'm glad we're on the same page on that show anyway. Yeah, okay, yeah. That's. I just wanted to to confirm that you dropped it for the reasons I expected you dropped it, yeah. <laughs> dropped it for. <laughs> yep, makes sense. Um, I guess I have one final thing to say about this season as a whole, mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. it is uh, Love Live Nijisaki. Still good, not nearly as good as the first season. Um, I I feel like adding the extra three characters was unnecessary. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like it's even more unnecessary that they're adding four new characters to Love Live Superstar. <laughs> so, oh, are they? Jeez. Yep, they're making it. Like, that was Love Live Superstar's thing. It was like, there's only five girls this time. Nine, the formula's yeah. <laughs> different. And it was like, cool, we succeeded because the formula's different. Let's make it the same thing again. Oof. Wow. Yeah. Was that's, the music good at least? Kind of depressing. But, um, I mean, at least they have the money to make good-looking things now. So. Yeah, which they always did, and they especially did after like one core of the first season. They just they didn't just elected use it to until not Nijisaki. use it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it, I guess the first season 
worked because uh, it was kind of like episodic, just spending an episode on each character. Yeah. And each of their character arcs were pretty good self-contained stories. Um, but yeah, now adding more characters uh, and making it more of like the traditional love live group dynamic and subgroup dynamic um i don't know i don't know if i like it more or less i, guess, I like it less yeah i guess the uh i still like it which is more than i can say about the first two series at this point um but i think you know every time a new love live comes out um I like it more at the beginning because something about it feels different. Uh, but after a while, you know, it just becomes kind of the same old idol show. And 13 main characters is too many main characters. And let's see, what are we at now? Uh, so we've averaged nine idols per series. So that's 36 plus U is 37. If they're adding four more to Superstar than. 41 main love live girls in anime by next month that's a uh, lot that's a lot man there are more than <laughs> like girls. 40 girls in uh idol master cinderella girls so jesus yeah wow. this is nothing compared that's, to that <laughs> idols need to be stopped i've said no, they before. don't <laughs> i'll Keep say them coming. again this needs to be stopped yeah it's fine i uh I always hope that I'll dislike it more than I do because I feel like I spend too much time. Like, what are we at? Uh, at the end of Superstar, I'll have watched like a hundred episodes of Love Live. That's Oof. a problem. <laughs> um, yeah, you, well, you don't watch any of like the bad idol shows. You like just watch Love Live yeah. pretty much. And there, there are plenty of idol shows to hate out there. Oh, I know. I just. Uh, I disappoint myself in that I like any of them because I really <laughs> do just fucking that hate against the idols as a concept. <laughs> huh? You're just that against idols as a concept, where you just <laughs> inherently yeah. go into shows involving them, hoping to hate them. <laughs> yeah, and like I, because when Nichikasaki first started, I was at the point where I was like, you know, neither of those first two Love Live shows were that good. I really shouldn't spend any more time on love live and then you got on the podcast and we're like yo this new series is amazing it's totally different and so i watched the first episode and i was like god damn it's pretty good i remember you uh, telling me that you hated me after yeah. <laughs> i finally think yeah. i'm out and then dj pulls me right back in. exactly I, I don't regret it at all because especially the first episode of niji Yasaki where you get chase and ayumu's song it's like oh, okay this is fucking like the first time setsuna shows up and like mm -hmm. she sings and like the fire comes everywhere and you're like oh man this is this is a new thing this is not love live anymore and then it becomes love live again <laughs> i really like the few times that i'm reminded that setsuna is also like an otaku she is a huge <laughs> otaku and it's uh even more apparent in uh the all-stars game mm. but yeah i uh i just <laughs> all of these shows are ultimately just platforms for uh, an extremely exploitative real life industry and uh, mobile games, gotcha games, which are inherently uh, predatory towards people with addictive personalities. Um, and present seeing the fakeness of the real life idols uh, really rubs me the wrong way. So yeah i i hate everything that it stands for um but i still like the shows as self-contained stories so that's kind of where my dilemma comes from and that is fair yeah i'll stick to my uh idol with a twist shows like zombie land saga and whatnot mm -hmm. it's a great one just dip my toes you know i mean every idol show has like a twist now like there, are, there are very few true idol shows anymore. There's always like one weird aspect to them. Like you get a, a twenty two seven where it's they all have like a really intense trauma. <laughs> so, 
I have been meaning I to watch. I don't even know if it would be considered an idol show, but just based off what it looks like, uh, re- review Starlight. I'm it is not that. an idol show, but okay. it may as well be. <laughs> um, also, I don't like it. Oh. I heard the movie was really good. I also heard the movie was really good, and I heard the end of the anime was really good too, but I dropped it after six episodes. Yeah, I dropped it after like three, because um, I also didn't like it that much. But I have friends who are really into it, and yeah, I heard great things about the movie. It's got a cult um, following. Like There are people who yeah. are super into Revy Star. I tried playing the, the, the gotcha game too, and it sucks. <laughs> but there are plenty of people who are just like, it's the best. So, mm-hmm. good for them. <laughs> yeah, I might go back and check it out at some point if like I still have High Dive and Sentai puts up the movie and I'm still hearing good things about it. I'll probably go back, finish the series and watch the movie. Watch it just for the fact that Kenji Dotsuda voices a giraffe. So <laughs> That's a pretty That's good true. Role. I forgot about that. <laughs> yep. uh-huh. um, all right, so that covers your top six shows covers my basically all of my shows that weren't continuations um which i've already talked about plenty so anyone have anything else i don't think so i think i'm good cool nice right at the two hour recommendations yeah but Mm. i have i have a question first about recommendations um and this is because it'll the answer to this question will uh determine whether or not i recommend a certain thing um how do we feel about um fan translations of visual novels um like not pirated copies but uh patches that fans create for unlicensed properties do we consider that piracy is the premise that you buy the japanese release and then use this yes all right i think it's fair to recommend that someone import a japanese product and then download a fan's work in yeah. that case, uh, I, I recommend that everyone import the Japanese copy of White Album 2. Um, you don't mm. even have to import the copy. You can literally get the Japanese version of the game online, just download it, and then you can apply the fan patch over it. But that came out in December, uh, entirely unbeknownst to me, and I have been binging the visual novel ever since. Um, it is widely regarded as one of the best visual novels ever written, and I uh, understand why. It is just so eloquently worded and poetic and it's just a soap opera in every sense and there's a bunch of shit that defies logic in the best way possible and it's just a hyper drama love triangle that uh keeps ramping up until the very end and it's extremely long a bunch of memorable characters and i even like the anime um but yeah uh get white album 2 just get the japanese copy it's like 50 dollars online or something after conversion rates Hmm. yeah i'm always so conflicted about visual novels because i find that i don't really like the medium and all of the really well-regarded ones are so absurdly long yep (laughs) um so to take the time out of the other shit that i'm you know wasting my life on uh to do that um isn't a big motivator but i feel like I need to experience, like, the greats of this medium that is the basis of so much anime. Well, you experience Love Love, which is, like, more than a lot of people can say, because that's fucking long as hell. (laughs) I I went through all of Love Love because it has been, well, Alternative has been the highest rated visual novel forever, Mm -hmm. and it got a full official release. So I made it all the way through that, um, and I played all the way through steins gate twice if you count elite um so those are the top two so if white album two uh gets an official english release it is currently number three closing chapter on is it the three MDB. okay i thought it was four i bet it jumped up a bunch of spots after that fan translation came out probably it's so good it is so good and the music's amazing but it's like a music mm-hmm story so uh and and for anyone unaware you don't have to have played white album one first it is very very loosely related and not necessary at all yeah Uh, spiritual successor complete restart honestly you can even watch the white album two anime um Mm -hmm. to figure out if you like the visual novel or not because uh the anime only covers 
the introductory chapter and white album two is separated into three different chapters introductory mm-hmm. chapter is like four or five hours of content in the game itself oh wow um and then yeah closing chapter is the bulk of it um but yeah the anime is great because it is not adapting an absurd amount of material and introductory chapter is kinetic anyway so there are no choices that would alter hmm. the path um Interesting. and it's yeah it's it's a really loyal adaptation and the art of the anime is is probably better than the art of the visual novel um that's that's really my biggest qualm with the game is that a lot of the cgs are weirdly proportioned and not great uh but like writing wise it is absurd so yeah that's mine uh, speaking yeah, about I, uh, I was go just ahead. gonna say speaking about vns i was eyeing uh umineko because it's on sale on the steam sale right now and uh, that like when you said like there are people that will praise these as like the highest forms of storytelling and stuff but like like you said it's like yeah i hear umineko and feta morgana are amazing but do i have the time to to right. take care and take into those i don't know i don't think i do but like i don't know after watching enough seasons of higurashi i'm interested but it's just such dedication i don't know i yeah. too much other um, shit umineko is another one that i've been you know going back and forth on whether I should because yeah that's number four on that list yeah that's a huge time sink <laughs> I know they yeah. all are like Steins Gate was fine Muv Love absurd time sink all of these high rated ones it's way too long Fata Morgana isn't that long mm. I think it's probably like 30 hours or something okay that's not too bad that's fair for, for VN that's fair yeah, yeah exactly but yeah the uh, I did like the White Album 2 anime um which I was not expecting because I did not like the White Album 1 anime. Um, oh, yeah, it's a so completely was, different thing. <laughs> yeah, very different. Uh, although I do like the song White Album, which is prominent in both. So good. And obviously, well, not obviously because it's White Album 2, but it's a, it's a huge part of the second series, which you probably mm-hmm. know since you watched the anime. Yeah. Like Beatles White Album? No. Or no. Oh, I was <laughs> like, different, different white album. <laughs> yeah. I was like, that, sure, that's not what I was expecting. <laughs> I'm sure that was a point of reference for the title, mm. but uh in the canon of the show it refers to a white photo album. Uh gotcha. Um but yeah, I uh I think I only watched that show because the second one because I didn't realize that it was not a sequel, so I was originally going to be like, oh, White Album 1 fucking sucked, I'm not going to watch any more of this. Uh, but then I saw that the closing chapter was so highly rated on VNDB, and so that's the reason why I actually watched the adaptation. And yeah. I've been hoping for a closing chapter adaptation ever since then, because it would probably not be uh, 70 hours long. The thing, um, but I, I think the thing that, that sets apart closing chapter from uh, a lot of the other uh, just dramatic love triangle games is that it takes place like several years after high school is over. So everyone's like a working adult after uh, story. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's literally white album after story. But the first part of white albums only like four or five hours, but it's like four or five really important hours that forever changes the lives of these three people. And it's like mm-hmm. just them trying to get over what happens in those and the short time they spent together over the course of years, and that's what closing chapter is about. It's it's really good. The character writing's insane. Yeah, I really wish they'd adapt that. I'm sure it's just because it's so long that they haven't. Yeah. But hey, we finally got Muv Love Alternative without its predecessors, and it sucked. So oh. you know, <laughs> anything's possible. Yeah. Oh hey, VNDB added uh, how long the things actually are. Yes, cool. yeah, they did. That's a, a great new feature. <laughs> yeah, because it used to be just like longer than X number of hours, which everything was. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> over 50 hours. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think like, I'm yeah. probably like, and I think the, the White Album counts wrong because I'm pretty sure that I'm already over it. Like I'm, I'm mm. probably 70 to 80 hours into White Album too, I'd, 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 I'd estimate. How do you have time for this? Honestly... I don't know. Um, <laughs> I I just stay up late, I guess. Mm. Like, I'll, I'll normally do, like, an hour or two at night before I go to bed. 
and i've been playing it over the course of like a couple months so i guess yeah Hmm. as long as you average a few hours a day then yeah Yeah, i haven't touched it in like a week because i've been busy Mm -hmm. but i want to get back to it soon (laughs) yeah well that's a good recommendation discussion i guess yeah (laughs) yeah i've went more directions than i expected to yeah um i i guess i don't have any recommendations outside of the shows we praise like kaguya and spy family so i'll choose another one that's not anime related but uh at the time of recording uh monster hunter rise sunbreak comes out tomorrow and I think Monster Hunter is an amazing game, so I recommend people buy that if they're into it, because it's probably going to be a really good expansion. And I'm going to be playing that. But, um, yeah. Yeah, I don't see anything really since the last time we recorded that I have to recommend. Um, so, yeah, I will just double down on Kaguya-sama. Everyone should go watch it. Um, if you have any interest in romance or comedy or drama in anime uh it hits all of them really well and i think uh it's it's got something for everyone and it is worth it if you think that it's going to just disappoint you and uh just keep teasing you forever with no commitment it is not that so watch that show do it also the fruits basket movie was fine it's a it's one of those hilarious Rotten Tomatoes discrepancies where, let's see, let me get an, uh, an update here. As of last mm-hmm. night, it was at a, let's see, I've almost got it open. There we go. Um, 33% critic oh rating God. and Ooh. 95% audience score. <laughs> uh, was it like like two critics were bad and one was good <laughs> or something? Uh, basically, yeah, two... <laughs> Two were good, four were bad. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But still, it's a very hilarious discrepancy to see. Uh, but yeah, it's as long as you, which I don't think it's playing in theaters anymore. I think last night was the, the last night it was playing. But uh, whenever it comes out in another form, um, as long as you expect it to be a half an hour recap and then the rest of it be the prequel that was promised, it's all pretty good. And I think that's all we've got. So you can find Phantom Post Radio anywhere that you find podcasts. Subscribe, rate, and review. We're on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, um, Spotify, SoundCloud, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, Alexa, PhantomPost.com. You can get in contact with us on social media. Follow us, like our stuff, um, share it ask questions, recommendations, anything like that. We are on Twitter and Facebook at Phantom Post Radio. You can also contact us via email, phantompostradio at gmail.com. Uh, I'm on Twitter at Full Metal Kyoma. I don't really tweet ever. Um, but well, I when you did. do, have you given up? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? I say, but when you do, they bang, apparently. Yes. What, that one tweet? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kestrel That's peaks high. and then just abandons Twitter. Yeah, <laughs> go out and mine it. Yeah, he conquered the platform. I've, yeah, I've conquered exactly. the bird. <laughs> yeah, I had one uh, popular tweet a few months ago that was neat. Um, but I did uh, just finish reviewing a little show called Kaguya-sama season three. So go read all my reviews for that. Um, I feel like I didn't uh, spend as much time as I should have on some of them. But hopefully the last one uh, gets a little bit into my, um, I don't know, self-psychoanalyzing of why we enjoy certain aspects of these kind of torturous formulas uh, and how Kaguya-sama makes it work and also uh, subverts the tropes and does everything right. That's me. Cool. Cool. Uh, and you can find me on Twitter at DJ No Style. I, I tweet more often, um, mainly just things about my game, which you can find at LessonsInLoveGame.com. And uh, that those are the places that you can find me. Oh, hey, what did VNDB do to you? <laughs> oh, okay. So 
This is fucking absurd, and it, it really upsets me that this is, like, actually a thing that happened. So, apparently, so many people left good reviews for my game that they flagged them all as covert advertising. <laughs> they were and bots. you can now no Sorry. longer post a positive review of my game without wow. it being flagged as advertisement. Wow. And I, like, reached out to them about this, and I'm like, I have no idea what the fuck is going on, but it is blatantly untrue. And they were just like, okay, thanks for clarifying. <laughs> and they just <laughs> never fucking did anything about it. Eesh. So... That is a, a huge slap in the face, and I like don't even like going any going there anymore because it's like being punished for too many people liking my game is not a thing I ever thought I'd have to deal with, Damn. and it's just so insulting that they would do that because I've never seen that happen to any other game on there, and I just it's it's disgusting. Wow, that's rough. That does suck. Uh, well, on that note, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Hellshake Brando. I tweet a bit. It's kind of all over the place. Sometimes anime, sometimes it's not. Uh, I just finished up reviewing Spy Family for Phantom Post, so go check those reviews out. Not sure if I'm going to be doing any of the seasonal shows next season, but I got some other... Uh, fun articles up in the pipeline so look forward to some of those sometime soon nice well we are getting anime expo this weekend and a new anime season this weekend so we will have plenty to talk about whenever we return hopefully it will not be a month like it usually is between our episodes uh, but whenever we do please join us thank you for joining us see you next time peace out bye